Hey everybody, uh, Crash here, DM for this campaign. If you're watching this, uh, just a heads up, we did not record these sessions or stream them. So episodes 1 through 23 are just summed up by me and the players of Bubbles, Klaximus, and Analora as we sort of look back at the beginning of the campaign in those early episodes and try our best to remember what happened and provide some kind of context for what happened in the earlier days of the campaign. So they're short, they're sweet, I hope, uh, and they help sort of establish the history of the campaign that has spanned two years and uh, over 100 sessions. So hope you enjoy. All right, let's jump into session three, how to be a pirate. Uh, I think they gave us a series of training courses with Riaris Krein. Oh man, Riaris Krein. Uh, and a lot of this crew artwork um, was from the original uh, adventure, uh, except in the original adventure, almost everyone was a human. So all the non-humans, like the crabs and the sharks and stuff like that, um, I did swap out uh, for the artwork. But yeah, a lot of this is the OG artwork. Paizo Adventures do always have phenomenal artwork, um, even even nowadays. Um, they They... They pride themselves on putting some really good artwork in the adventures. Um, this session, uh, you had to go capture some crabs for dinner, because Dungar wanted crabs. So that is actually where you guys had your first combat encounter against uh, monsters. Um, and I believe you had to swim out to a reef. I don't know if I even still have that map anymore. It was it was definitely a reef. Yeah, uh, reef. Reef Re claws. Yeah, Reef Claws. Right. Yep, I'm looking for them. Let's see. I don't think they've added a search function to Roll20 yet, so I have to sort of scan everything with my eyeballs and see if I can see it. Uh, let's see. If it makes you feel better, it's probably all the way to the left. All the way <laughs> to the left. Uh, let's see. we got Dragon Turtle. we got Sea Cave. Uh, Firegrass. Uh, oh, well. I'll just bring up any old reef map and throw a, uh... yeah, I'll just throw the reef claws up on the screen. Now, the reef claws are an actual Pathfinder monster that I did have to convert over um, to 5e. And in the beginning, again, I was trying my best to um, do as much uh, original, not original, but, you know, honor the original source material as much as possible. So they're like... They're going to fight these Reef Claws. I was like, all right. So I was going through meticulously and converting every Pathfinder monster over to 5e. Um, I was trying really hard not to sub out 5e monsters that already existed, even if I could find one that was comparable, because I really wanted the challenge of trying to convert the entire adventure path over. Um, overall, it was a pretty exciting uh, fight, because, you know, these things are... Uh, essentially ambushing you from the, the reef. You guys finally got a chance to flex your muscles and all that. And you were sent there essentially as expendables. And then your performance there impressed the captain enough that in the next two sessions, you got sent to your first dungeon. Um, which it's always fascinating to me um, how this campaign manages to add dungeons and dragons to a pirate story. Um, and a lot of the dungeons you went to, especially early on, um, were dungeons in so much as they were places you had to go and explore, um, but they weren't always like going deep down into the ground like traditional dungeons, um, which was neat. Now, the thing about uh, the quest you guys went on in sessions four and five uh, that we'll talk about in a second um, was that that was a point in the adventure where they were like, now you should run a side quest. We have lots of them available to Paizo Insiders or whatever service they had at the time where you would get like adventures every month in like a magazine or a subscription or something like that. And that's when I started to understand the Paizo business model. Um, they sell you six different books for the same campaign and then a map pack, a deluxe map pack, uh, a monster manual supplement, uh, an NPC supplement, a side quest supplement, and then you could sign up for a subscription to get a monthly adventure set to you every month. It was wild. It was yeah. wild. Yeah, the yeah. amount of content uh, for this campaign, 
that was essentially DLC. It was all optional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was crazy. Um, we still have that in fifth edition D and D nowadays. Like when I ran storm King Thunder, it was a beefy adventure. I still ended up going to the DMS guild and picking up additional content, um, for that campaign. Because just like this campaign, there were a number of times during Storm King Sunder where it just said, and now they should go on some adventures. Shrug. And I was like, okay. I kind of hoped the whole adventure would be in this book. Um, so I went back in time to Dragon Magazine, Dungeon Magazine, and I got this adventure, Emperor of the Waves, that was written by Mike Merles. And I converted it over to 5th edition. Uh, and what I thought was really cool about that was that uh, a few months later, they announced Ghosts of Saltmarsh uh, was coming out, and that was one of the adventures that they put into Ghosts of Saltmarsh. So you guys actually got to play my converted version of it and not the official Wizards of the Coast converted version of it, because I did it first. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I think cool. this that was around the time that you were telling me... Uh, Oh, I'm pretty certain that uh, Wizards of the Coast have, like, my home bug. <laughs> yeah, like, wiretapped my phone or whatever. Yeah. Um, there was a couple of adventures from Ghost of Saltmarsh that were on my conversion list. So then when they announced that they were going to convert it, I was like, well, that's cool. I won't have to worry about converting those. But it was a really cool feeling to have converted it to 5e before it officially got converted. Um, but let's talk about that adventure. Um, you killed the Reef Claws, um, you got back, you cooked them up, um, Dungar was very impressed with you, a little bit of time passed, there was a storm coming, um, and Peppery Long Farthing, Peppery Long Farthing, uh, the ship wizard, she had detected a powerful artifact that Dungar was looking for, and didn't want to risk losing the artifact to the storm, they took their most expendable and capable new sailors and basically told you guys, go to this derelict ship and bring us back the artifact or don't come back at all. Uh, so nice of them. Yeah. Um, man, the beginning of this campaign was just dynamite. Uh, so you guys took Sandara with you for uh, some NPC support and then the five of you rode out there and had to explore this derelict ship. And um, I tried my best to make the ship feel spooky. Um, the plot line of it was there was a... Uh, it was a slaving vessel. And the slaves basically cursed the, um, the crew. And prayed to uh, a powerful demon uh, for deliverance and vengeance against their, uh, their captors. And the ship ended up being taken over by, like, bugs and spiders and all sorts of other nasty stuff. And then the, um, all the slavers were killed. But then the lizard folk slaves did not know how to sail a ship. And they were just kind of dead in the water. Um, eventually the ship became derelict. And then eventually the lizard folk had to eat each other to survive. And then only one lizard folk was left, and he was a super big badass um, with all sorts of warlock powers. And uh, you ended up having this huge, crazy fight against him. And that was when, uh, I don't know, the first incarnation of Artificer that Analora was playing um, still had this dope ice uh, ice move where you could, like, freeze water into freeze. huge, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, huge yeah. cubes so... of ice. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, maybe we should talk a little bit about uh, Analura's class thing. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so obviously she's an artificer now. And she's always been an alchemist. Uh, she still is, uh, even if her subclass doesn't say alchemist. Um, but, well, actually, even before she became an artificer, when I joined the campaign, I was actually... I asked you if uh, there were a Ladrin... Mm -hmm. in the shackles and i was planning to make an eladrin blade singer mm. to try but uh you were actually the one who told me that hey we're trying the um the, the home uh, artificer it was, homebrew. A, it was yeah it was a homebrew because they hadn't actually done an official ua artificer yet yeah yeah 
And I I looked at it, I was like, oh, okay, sure, I'll I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. So really you brought this upon yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we went through several iterations of UA artificers before Yeah, we went homebrew, they... then we did the first UA, the second UA, and then finally yeah. the official Eberron one. And then I guess some refinement with the Tasha's ones. So what is that? Five? You had five class changes essentially? Um, while yep. still remaining the same class. Yeah. Pretty much. You know what's funny? I never noticed. Like, <laughs> I always assumed, like, and, until, like, ah, shit, six months ago, when you were talking about, like, the new Tasha's one, mm. like, I didn't realize you had changed it. Yeah, oh. no, um, Onalore, cha- uh, Onalore was a good sport. Every time there was a new, a new version, remade the character to match the new version. Um... So throughout throughout her career, there was like a shifting. I don't want to say the power ever went down, like, but but there well, was I a, mean, <laughs> I think I think it only ever one, went up. Yeah, yeah. The very first one, I had like uh, a potion that created like essentially ice, a yeah. wall of ice. Right like at, at level one, cube. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, the, damn, the damn ice potion, you were just throwing that shit. Everywhere yeah, I we just fucking threw it everywhere. Yeah, it, it floated us to the surface. It it pretty much uh, helped us with that ship. I, too. I feel like I feel like now that the game is broken, um, you know, at the, two years later, uh, you're high enough level that the game's broken. We should just to- we should totally bring, bring that potion back. We should just totally bring that potion back, nostalgia wise. That'd be that'd be cool. So but yeah, there were yeah. a whole bunch of different potions, like healing potions. Like uh, it was, it was definitely a much more interesting yeah. alchemist than what they have now, um, for sure. Yeah, and part of why I allowed the alchemist uh, or the art- artificer or artificer uh, was that in the Pathfinder setting they had an alchemist class, like an entire class that was alchemist, and I also wanted to add firearms to the campaign. And so it felt like a the right move uh, thematically for the setting that there would be not a tremendous amount, like a, not like an Eberron amount of artificers, but a decent amount. Um, yeah. yeah. And I will say, like, on Alora's character, like, it, it your, your character's probably the coolest fucking pirate concept I've ever seen. It's like, like a scientist like pirate who's probably way too smart to be a fucking pirate you know what i mean but you're you're still a pirate for some reason <laughs> like i love that idea I, I, I don't know why well i mean that was the cool thing about the way the campaign started is you could have had any character um not just a character that was trying to be a pirate and just um they become a pirate out of necessity essentially mm-hmm. so yeah yeah cuz at, at that point well We'll talk about this later, I guess. But, like, yeah. I mean, you couldn't really just stop being... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were you were enslaved. Well, it, <laughs> it's also, like, every crime drama, right? Like, you do crime, and then you're like, well, I don't want, I'm not going to do crime anymore. And then the world of crime <laughs> is like, no, you're no. going to keep doing crime. And you're like, okay, one more crime. And then they're yeah. like, no. No. The three, problem three is... Three more crime. Moment. Yeah. The law gets involved, mm-hmm. and then you're like, the only way I could survive is to commit crimes. To right. like... And in a, in a setting where you've got pirates hunting pirates, you've got pirates at the top of the food chain, you got privateers, uh, you know, fighting against pirates, uh, you can't just tell, like, privateers that come after you, oh, I was forced to be a pirate. You know, they, they don't care. They're, they're still going to, you know, they're still going to take you down. Um, so at that point, you know... What are you gonna do? Might as well just accept. Yeah. So in sessions four and five, uh, you were successfully able to defeat the remaining crocodile uh, lizard folk. Um, however, the battle against him caused some damage to the ship, which was already in danger of sinking, and the possibly the magic of the artifact and the storm itself had attracted a kraken. Uh, a level appropriate encounter for um, a second or third level adventuring party. So, yeah. Really? Uh, no. <laughs> so then the no. ship, it's like a CR 23 monster. So the ship's being destroyed by the Kraken. You're trying to save the artifact. You're trying to survive the storms going on. 
And I felt like even with uh, even with Roll Twenty technology, uh, it was still a pretty cool encounter. Like we were we were drawn all over the ship because it was breaking into pieces, and um, there was the octopus tentacles like smashing the ship. And overall, I felt like uh, I felt like it was a tense and exciting first dungeon crawl for the campaign. And you guys made it back uh, to the ship and f further impressed the captain with your with your prowess. I am so. honestly, I can't fucking believe that three of us survived. <laughs> yeah, it was it was good, though. It was good. Um, that was a majority stake. Come on. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, it was I, I think I was close to dying a couple of times. Well, that guy, that boss, he was definitely, definitely tanky and definitely dealing out some hits. But, um, but overall, yeah, you guys were able to, able to take him pretty easily. Huh. All right. So I that, think, oh, yeah. At, at the, that, that crocodile guy that we, that we were fighting, mm -hmm. we were, I think we were trying to leave the ship early because it was starting to sink. Mm -hmm. And I had to, I did some kind of like identify and I had to pull the item out from his inside his body oh right he had swallowed the artifact uh he had yeah, 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 yeah he had eaten the artifact so you had to to kill him to get the artifact oh yeah yeah so we ripped it out of his body while the <laughs> ship was sinking and then thankfully because we're like uh, a bunch of us were aquan races yeah we had this really cool escape yeah overall it was ah here's the salvatron map god it's so hard to find stuff um Let's see. I guess I could take you guys over to it. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, not, not in Foundry anymore. Uh, there we go. Yeah. It wasn't a... It wasn't a Kraken either. It was just a sea monster. It was just a... Just a sea monster. It was just a sea monster um, that was wrecking the ship. And, yeah, you had to fight all kinds of, like, bugs and uh, crazy stuff like that. And then it was, yeah, this guy here was the dude at the bottom of the ship that you had to face. And then you could see the giant ice block that you <laughs> that you created. Uh, and then this amazing effect here, this blue rectangle representing the ship being torn in half. Ah, oh, man. Those are the good old days. It's good stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. Your little, your little jolly boat. And then the... Oh, yeah. man. Wasn't the, that from the hat? The original Analora art before she, uh, she got 15 different uh, tokens. Yeah, so. well, what about the bubbles of Junior Art before he got oh, a yeah. single toe? He looked a lot. He looked a lot tougher back then. He, he looked did. a lot tougher back then. Claximus looked a lot chubbier. This is like this is like fat uh, Claximus from middle school, and then <laughs> and the and the art on the overlay is like him after he slimmed down from uh, from being a pirate. So, ah, good stuff. All right, so that brings us to session six. One night at. Uh, a yellow island.